William Hill, the home of betting. So the half-time whistle blows on the Cheltenham Festival. How are we faring? And day three, let's give you the wrap. Kicking off with the competitive and open-looking JLT Novices Chase. Well, I don't like Oscar Whiskey in this. For all that he's a juggernaut and he's running over his right trip. A nine-year-old, his fencing doesn't really convince, and I'm not sure he's gonna be on the quick ground. That also applies to attacking De Soy. He's got huge knee action, this horse, real boat. He looked in last year's Neptune. I'll be taking him on. They say they go on it once, but I can't be having tacking. I do, however, like Felix Younger. I think he's got a chance on now the ground has turned. He needs to step up a bit, but he probably will with Ruby Walsh on board. But the one I'm really hoping Hopeful for is Vukovar from Harry Fry's yard. He's, he will probably act on the ground looking at his pedigree and you'll never see a better jumping performance from a novice than he did last time out in December. He's been kept fresh for this possible gold cup horse of the future. Now we move on to the mind-bogglingly competitive Patemps final. And with that in mind, I've got to be taking on Fingal Bay, the top weight. Superb first time out record he's got, and he's proved that coming back from a long layoff at Exeter when he beats Stablemate, if in doubt. He reopposes. However, with it being such a competitive race, I've just got to take him on as favourite. And I wouldn't be that surprised on the likely forecast sound surface if McCoy's mount, if in doubt, is stable, mate, turns it around. The one I really like, and I've got unfinished business with this horse because of the last year's renewal, is Jetson. Robbie Power got him way too far back last year and he stormed up the hill. You watch that replay, nothing finishes better. One of the biggest eye catchers of the week. He's got a much, much more solid jockey on him with Barry Geraghty in mind here. He's going to love this ground. Seven pound more, but that's because he won a decent renewal of a qualifier for this at Punchestown, lining up for it. Jesse Harrington, we know she's had a big week with his half-brother, that's Jeski. Jetson, he's a big player for me. Another at a big price if you'd like to go that way. On the bridge, look out for him with Schofield and his old friend Jeremy Scott. Big eye catcher, hasn't been seen since the November meeting when he ran in a qualifier. Could well outrun his odds. First grade one of the day then, the Ryanair chase. And I must admit, I've not got any great confidence about this race. They've been falling by the wayside. And I want to be against him, despite the stables in seemingly in decent form. Dynast, he just doesn't turn up at the festival. He hasn't so far anyway. He was second, of course, to Beneficent in last year's JLT. And I've got a feeling that form will be confirmed. Beneficent is a strange horse, but he does turn up on the big day. Will he win, however? I'm not totally convinced. He looks skinny enough to me at three to one. I do like Alpha off for this. Yes, he's got to bounce back for a couple of below par efforts. One was in the King George, one was in the Denman chase at Newbury, but this could be considered a drop in class from that really, and he's gonna have his ground. He's a three-time winner at Cheltenham. One at a big price, now we've got the surface, and let's face it, it's counting for plenty this week, is Rajhani Express, who won the Rewards for Racing handicap, that's the novice handicap, on the first day uh, this last season. He hasn't won since, but he hasn't had his ground. He loves this track, and he could go well at 16 to one. Let's move on to the thriller in Manila then, the rumble in the jungle. Annie Power versus Big Bucks. And I'm with the mayor. She's getting six pounds. She's going to stay in my view, especially now it's quickening up. I think they did the right thing coming to this race, especially when looking at Tuesday's champion hurdle. Would she have been taken off her feet? She's going to take an earth of beating. What about Big Bucks then? The amazing four-time winner, the best staying hurdler we've seen. Stuck in the mud though, wasn't he on his return, and that form is lowly. I think he'll probably reverse it with that Fisher's Cross, a horse that I've just not been with this season. I don't think that he's going to go well despite McCoy sticking with him. And rule the world looks the each way play, perhaps in some without markets. He's been laid out for this by target trainer Mouse Morris, going to like the ground. Back to handicap company now, and another mind-bogglingly competitive one, the Burn Group Plate. Funny enough though, this has been one of my most successful races of the last recent years, and let's hope I can steer you the right way. The two are like a shrod pedrag. He's been laid out for this, he's stepping up in trip. He's a Martin horse, basically, in the Barry Connell colours. If he gets round, he's gonna be bang, bang there at the finish. The other one I'm gonna throw a few quid at is Ballynagor, one for the pipe team this could be. All sorts of problems this horse has had, and he hasn't run since dropping out in the Paddy Power chase. But you watch back to that Paddy Power at halfway, nothing is going better. He's best mad fresh, returning from a 1 1 7 day break. He's positive in the market, which means he's going well at home, and he could well surprise a few. 
Time for the Kim Muir then. The amateur's chance to shine once more. And on Tuesday, Shotgun Paddy was beaten around about half a length despite hardly jumping a fence. Why? He had Derek O'Connor on him. O'Connor's won this race and switches to Indian Castle for Donald McCain, who, another trainer who targets this. He won at trials meeting on bad ground, but he steps back up in trip. Lots to like about his chance, but just looking at now the way the race is shaping up, is he high enough in the weights? And it's a terrible record for six-year-olds, this race. It really is. So has he really got the guts and the nous to do it at the business end? Of course, same connections had super duty touched off in the race. I'll be taking him on. Who with? One I've been waiting for all week. Balna Slow, Willie Mullins, Patrick Mullins on board. Well handicapped this after he's running the Thiestes in Ireland. Again, check your video, cruises round before. It's a real severe test that in the Thiestes. Just doesn't see it out behind Stable Mate on his own, but that's really, really good handicap form. I think he's well treated, I really like him. A mention must go to Cause of Causes. Could be one of the big gambles of the week, this for JP McManus, having a successful time of it, isn't he? He's well handicapped. After his run at Leopardstown last time out, he's surely going to go close. But it's bound to slow to end us on a flyer on day three.